Hello everyone. Today we will talk about clinical application of calcium hydroxide in dentistry, part 2. In the previous video, we have discussed about the basic properties of calcium hydroxides and, and the mechanism of action. And in this video, we'll, we will continue with the application part. So starting with the operative dentistry. Calcium hydroxide, when used as a cavity liner, is suspended in a solvent carrier like methyl ethyl ketone with a thickening agent. When it is placed on the pulpal floor, the solvent evaporates and it leaves a thin film of calcium hydroxide. These calcium hydroxide liners are reported to display antibacterial properties. And uh, uh, as we have discussed earlier, the antimicrobial properties of calcium hydroxide comes from the dissociation into calcium and hydroxyl ion. And the hydroxyl ion generated uh, are highly oxidant free radicals and they show high reactivity. Even they are much more effective as bacteria, antibacterial rather than sealing the cavity. These liner, although do not provide significant mechanical strength or thermal insulation, but it can neutralize the acid that migrate towards the pulp and it also generate the reparative dentine formation. So uh, the calcium hydroxide it is a very important point that the calcium hydroxide liners are reported to mediate underlying odontoblast survival when the remaining dentine thickness is less than 0 0.05 millimeter. Now coming on to the current protocol for pulp protection uh, when using this calcium hydroxide liner is to place a protective resin modified glass enamel base wherever we use the calcium hydroxide liner because the calcium hydroxide liners has got certain disadvantages that it is uh, highly uh, soluble in water and it and it got dissolved over a period of time being highly water softer so in order to compensate for the drawbacks of the calcium hydroxide liners even if the micro leakage occurs at the interface between the restoration and the tooth, this resin modified glass and cement will act as an insoluble barrier against the bacterial penetration into the deeper portion of the cavity. Now when calcium hydroxide used as a base, it provides some thermal insulation to the pulp if it is used in a sufficiently thick layer. However, a thickness of greater than 0.5 mm is not suggested. So practically, the thermal protection should be provided by the overlying high strength bases. The setting time of these calcium hydroxide bases varies between 2.5 to 5.5 minutes and the compressive strength of these cement continue to increase over 24 hour period. Now coming on to light activated calcium hydroxide cement. Uh, the Theracal Light Cure is a light cure radio cavity liner and a base material which is basically designed to be used uh, with conventional restorative material and composites and their adhesives. Uh, they are uh, able to bond with these material because they have got micro mechanical bonds to the dentine. It chemically bond to adhesive primer, composite and other resin based material. It has got numerous advantages over the conventional one like uh, they set on command until or unless we apply the light they are not going to set. So uh, uh, in this way they has got a longer working time and it is less brittle as compared to the conventional two paste system. And uh, uh, like conventional calcium hydroxide two paste system, they release favorable calcium ions and hydroxyl ions, and they got high compressive strength and low solubility in water and oral fluids. So they are time saving and it can be directly applied. So coming on to application in endodontics, calcium hydroxide is used in vital pulp therapy, routine intracanal dressing between appointments. In large for a pica lesion, in a vacation, control of persistent apical exudate into the canal, prevention of fluid resorption, 
repair of hydrogenic perforation, treatment of root fractures, consequent of root canal serous. So vital pulp therapy includes pulp capping, partial pulpotomy, full pulpotomy, pulpectomy, and the pulp capping with either direct or indirect. But the basic mechanism of all of these is to induce a dental bridge formation. So the mechanism of induction of dental bridge formation and the repair under calcium hydroxide is that it causes superficial coagulation of the pulp tissue on which it is placed. And, uh, the, uh, and the damage it caused to the blood vessels. And because of its high pH, this calcium hydroxide helped to maintain the immediate region in the state of alkalinity and this alkalinity is required for bone and dentine formation. So now we will discuss about the detail of the formation of the dentinal bridge. So first of all what happens, they act as an initiator for repair and the tissue in contact is dearranged and distorted. In the immediate tissue, uh, blood capillaries get uh, necrosed, so they are dearranged and distorted and uh, the subjacent parcal tissue necro necrosis and this zone is called zone of coagulation necrosis and the necrosis tissue now act as a low green irritant and by becoming a mild stimulant for the underlying undifferentiated missing chemical cells to differentiate into odontoglass. So these low grade irritant are stimulus for the underlying undifferentiated missing chemical cells to differentiate into odontoglass as a result of which a reparative dentin bridge is formed. So this is the basic mechanism of the formation of the dentinal bridge. But it has got certain disadvantages like there is formation of the tunnel defect and such defects may allow bacterial reinfection. The 1.5 to 2 mm layer of the sterile pulp necrotic layer may get infected under the leaking restoration thus causing pulpitis and subsequent pulp necrosis if left untreated. Also, few authors have shown that MTA may be superior material when compared to calcium hydroxide. Uh, according to study by Maria et al., uh, both the material were successful but calcium hydroxide was slower than MTA in this regard. Selzer and Bender in 1975 attributed two undesirable side effects of calcium hydroxide when used as a pulp capping or pulpotomy agent. One of the possibilities is the eventual complete calcification of the tissue in the root canal and the second adverse effect is the persistence of induced inflammation which may eventually cause the internal resorption. Coming on to apexification. So what is apexification? Apexification is defined as uh, basically it is a process to induce a calcific barrier in the root with an open apex or a continued apical development in an incompletely formed root in a teeth with necrotic pulp tissue. It can also be defined as the process of creating an environment within the canal and periapical tissue after the pulp death that allows the calcified barrier to form across the open apex. And this calcified barrier consists of fosterosomentum and bone-like tissue. So how do we create such environment? First of all, it involves cleaning and shaping of the canal to remove the debris and bacteria, followed by placement of the paste to the apex. So different materials are used, but, but uh, the calcium hydroxide is the most uh, promising one and is commonly used. So when calcium hydroxide is uh, used as a creamy mix to achieve the canal disinfection. The heart tissue barrier is formed uh, with regard to long term calcium hydroxide therapy and the irregularly arranged cemental like tissue, soft tissue and calcified tissue is formed which impart a characteristic Swiss cheese consistency. The usual time required for a, to achieve apexification is 6 to 24 months uh, but however uh, there is one case report uh, that uh, it has got a 4 years of treatment to got 
and to get a complete apex replication done. So this is a demerit that this extended time period may be highly inconvenient both for the dentist and the patient. And also the calcium hydroxide affects the mechanical properties of dentin when used for a longer period of time uh, as it may render the tooth susceptible to fracture. Now coming uh, on to the canals with exudate. So the weeping canals. So in case of weeping canals, uh, what is weeping canals? Uh, these tooth uh, are uh, often asymptomatic and uh, during uh, 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 root canal treatment they show uh, constant uh, reddish exudate with a, with a periapical radiolucency. They may be asymptomatic but they are tender to percussion or sensitive to digital pressure over the apex. And if such tooth are cultured, the drainage will not generally support bacterial growth. But uh, when the pulp chamber is open at, this, uh, uh, at the start of the treatment, uh, that is, the discharge may appear. Whereas in the succeeding appointment, the exudate will become clear. And uh, in, in when such tooth is left open uh, for 15 to 30 minutes, the exudate will stop. But similar exudate appear in the next treatment appointment. So uh, the best way to stop the exudate in such cases is to dry the canal with sterile paper point and to place calcium hydroxide paste in the canal. So because weeping canals are not ready for obturation, so we can place calcium hydroxide in the canal. And two theories have been proposed uh, in this regard that uh, the calcium hydroxide uh, may start to build the build uh, build bone in the lesion and also the caustic action of the calcium hydroxide uh, may cauterize the residual chronically inflamed tissue basically the main action of the calcium hydroxide appear because of the increased activity of the alkaline phosphatase because it is fine in the area of the uh, calcification and uh, the calcium hydroxide by neutralizing the acidic environment may suppress the acid hydrolyzed activity and by the activation of alkaline hydrolase may improve the microenvironment so that calcification can occur so, high alkalinity of the tissues to make repair process. In case of horizontal root fracture, and the use of calcium hydroxide in teeth with horizontal root fracture was uh, first recommended by Spike in 1974, he proposed that the canal at the level of fracture line was compared to the apical foramen of an immature teeth. Uh, the benefit uh, of using calcium hydroxide uh, is basically because of its antibacterial effect and its ability to form the heart tissue barrier and the pical opening of the coronal fragment. Uh, in the management of horizontal root fracture, the coronal segment is considered as an immature tooth with open apex and the apexification procedure is done. But the MTA uh, can be now used for optimal closure of the pical end of the coronal segment once canal disinfection has been eliminated. In case of perforation, it has been suggested that large apical perforation should be treated in a similar way uh, as the teeth with immature biases, that, uh, that is, with the long term calcium dioxide treatment to achieve the heart tissue barrier. Obviously, root or apical perforation can cause failure of the root canal treatment, which may lead to root loss. Calcium hydroxide has got many benefits in the treatment modality including the easy manipulation and also it has got rapid resorption uh, when it extrudes into the periodontium and uh, they also promote the reorganization of the PDR tissue and induction of the mineralized material. So it is a traditional agent to manage the perforations and its use is still uh, indicated to control the infection. In case of root resorption, uh, calcium hydroxide uh, 
has also got a certain advantages like it is defined as an uh, resorption if you define uh, is uh, defined as affecting the cementum or dentine of the root or of a tooth on the basis of the site of the origin of resorption they may be classified as internal external or root end resorption as you all know that calcium hydroxide has got alkaline ph and heart tissue resorption is an enzymatic activity which takes place in acidic environment so what happens the calcium hydroxide creates an alkaline environment and thus the reaction is reversed this calcium hydroxide has an active influence on the local environment of the resorption area by reducing the osteoclastic activity and stimulating the repair so however mta can also be used and other internal other materials like biodentin can also be used it can also be is also a choice but yeah calcium hydroxide is also one of the option now how to remove the calcium hydroxide removal of calcium hydroxide from the canal is also one of the very important step because it may bind uh, with the sealers and it will prevent the proper diffusion of the calcium hydroxide uh, uh, it will prevent the proper diffusion of the sealer into the root canal in so the removal of calcium hydroxide is very important step so the type of vehicle used and the use of patent patent filing and combined edta and sodium hypochlorite with hand instrumentation improve the efficacy of the calcium hydroxide paste removal and furthermore ultrasonic methods are more efficient in removing the calcium hydroxide before we talk about the uh, before we talk about the advantages uh, calcium hydroxide is also used as sealer and uh, but the use of the calcium hydroxide sealer has got certain disadvantages like uh, and they are highly resorbed uh, they are highly soluble they easily get dissolved but yet they provide certain therapeutic benefits so they are also they can also be used as a root canal sealers now coming on to the advantages of the calcium hydroxide so they are initially bactericidal uh, then bacter then bacteriostatic and they promote healing and repair and uh, the pH uh, is high which stimulates the fibroblast and, um, and thus they neutralizes the low pH of the acid and they stop the internal resorption and obviously they are inexpensive and they are very easy to use but the disadvantage is that they are associated with primary tooth resorption and may dissolve after one year with chemical surface dissolution uh, may degrade during acid etching and degrade degrades upon tooth flexure uh, there may be marginal failure with amalgam condensation and it doesn't adhere to dentin or resin restoration so these are the application of the calcium hydroxide so that's all for today thank you